Hi, my name is Crystal Serlak. I am an author and, uh, well, a writer, I guess. Um, I am published, self-published on the Amazon KDP Select program, and it's been about a year since I signed up for this program, and I kind of thought it would be an interesting time now to put my thoughts down, so to speak, in a vlog series where I can, excuse me, talk about my experiences, what I've learned, how I got started, and what I can expect from the future with um, being a self-published author on Amazon Select. Um, I did a lot of research into this program when I decided I was going to publish my novel, Zoe Thanatos. And there's a lot of information out there and a lot of people have different experiences. Mine is not going to be the same as everyone else's. In fact, or I mean, I think maybe mine is probably more um, apropos of what the typical experience will be like. I haven't sold, you know, giant numbers of books. I haven't made tremendous amounts of money from my books in the last year. But I have sold books and I have made some money. And that's going to be the typical experience you will find if you are a self-published author, especially on the Amazon KDP program. There are some people who have tremendous success and they're pulling in three-digit, four-digit, five-digit, sometimes six-digit numbers on a monthly or even yearly basis. These are all people to aspire to and to look at and, and want to be, want to have your success imitate theirs. But every person's experience with the program is going to be different. So, like I said, I just thought I would tell you about mine in a series that I could be honest about everything I've experienced and maybe give you some kind of information that I myself was looking for last year when I published my first book. So here's a little background information about me. I have been writing since I was eight, seven years old. I wrote my first story, I think on my eighth birthday, about a girl wanting to get her ears pierced for her eighth birthday. It was very um, autobiographical. I mean, it was me. And I continued to write stories almost completely until I was about 21 years old. 21, 22, um, I was, I, I published things online in the early, uh, early noughties, late nine, late nineties. Um, I'm sure you could probably guess what kind of stories I published, but it, I'll just say it was fan fiction. It's not really something I typically advertise to people or tell them about because, um, Though it's a perfectly acceptable form of self-expression, I'm a little embarrassed by it. But it was writing, and it was fun, and I got a lot of feedback on that writing, and especially from random strangers on the internet who, today those are the people who are going to be buying, buying your books, random strangers on the internet and around the world. Um, but it was a good experience to get feedback from friends, family, strangers, and it made me realize maybe I have a little bit of talent in the writing department. But I kind of didn't stick with it. I I have been in school pretty much since then for the last 10 years. I've 10 or more years I've been in um, you know, post high school education. I went to community college and completed two associates degrees and I transferred to um, Cal Cal State Channel Islands and finished a bachelor's degree in art and now I am at the the very edge, the precipice of finishing my master's degree in media psychology from Fielding Graduate University. So I haven't really had time to write because I've been in school full time for ever and so when I write, I write academic papers um, and writing for fun kind of took a back burner. Until last year, just over a year ago, I I kind of just started having this idea for a story and it ended up being Zoe Thanatos, the book that I published. Um, 
when I first started writing it, it was not to, it was not to publish it. I didn't even really know that self-publishing was a thing. And if I did, I didn't think it was something I could conceivably do. Um, but around June or July of last year, when it was really coming along and I was liking the direction it was going, I took it upon myself to look into publishing. It, was this something I could do? You know, I'm, I don't really feel comfortable with this traditional idea of publishing where you send off millions of query letters and for the most part you get rejection. Maybe you get a little bit of interest. Um, I am not someone who has thick skin. Um, though I try to be, rejection hurts. And I think whoever you are, rejection hurts, regardless of if you have thick or thin skin, if you're a sensitive person or your heart is rock. So I just knew that wasn't going to be something I would want to go through and having people tell me what I should do to change it and having people be responsible for my work. I just wanted all of that myself. So when I looked into self-publishing, it really seemed like, okay, this is something I can do. I can make my own book cover. I can edit my own books. I can take it as seriously as I want to and use it as a side experience to augment whatever I was going to do, you know, with a job and in real life. Um, so I, I just read everything about it that I could. And I kind of came up with a game plan. I was going to publish on Smashwords and I was going to publish maybe on um, Barnes and Noble Nook. That came later. It wasn't initial. And I was going to publish on Amazon. And they have the program where you commit to them for 90 days and you get five free days of um, promotion. Your book can be a part of the Kindle Kindle lending library um, and you do make money off of that as well. There were all these options available and so I had my game plan and September was when I finished the book. I edited it really quickly and it's still not perfect. It's not a polished version that I published and that was my choice. I was kind of in a time crunch because when I started writing the novel I was in, on break from school and then my summer session of school, I only had one class. When you're a grad student, full-time is two classes, half-time is one class. And I took just half-time because I was taking a particularly difficult class and I wanted the time to acclimate myself and really um, involve myself in the class and not fail at it. So I was only in one class for the summertime and that allowed me a lot of time to write the story. Then I had another break, a month off from school, and then in September I was going back into full-time classes and I knew that I wasn't going to be able to write and be in school at the same time because grad school is very demanding and it just, it was a, t a time crunch. So I, September was my goal. And that's when I finished and edited. I'd already made my the book cover. And on September 19th, my grandmother's birthday, the book officially went up on Amazon. It also went up on Smashwords. Um, but I'm not going to talk about that experience right now. That'll be for a later time. Mostly this is just an overview of my experiences with Amazon. So it was really exciting. I mean the kind of joy and accomplishment, the sense of accomplishment I felt when it was available and people could buy it and people started buying it and it was really just like, holy shit, pardon my language, I am a published author, even though it's in this really new format and this self-publishing thing, it, it was still... It doesn't matter if I went through Amazon or if I went, excuse me, through a traditional publishing service. I have a book available on Amazon. You can get it in ebook. You can get it in paperback. That's pretty freaking cool. So since then, like I said, it's August 30th now. It's been almost a year since I published. And since then, I've put up other titles. 
um, from, I, I had this series called The Romance of Nick and Layla. It's a romance series, as you can, you know, tell by the sound of it. Um, I wrote it when I was younger. I wrote three stories, and they're novellas. So they're about 30,000 words average each. Um, I, they were older, I updated them edited them and put them up on Amazon as well. And surprisingly, with no marketing whatsoever, no advertising, I didn't even tell, you know, friends that I had put this these stories up on Amazon. Um, they started selling. And I took advantage of the five promo days. Um, and for the last eight months, I have seen sales from those books. Which has kind of been surprising to me because, you know, I don't think they are representative of my writing style now. I think Zoe Thanatos is, and that's kind of where I want to go with writing. And I definitely put a lot of myself in writing Zoe, and, you know, it's not selling as great as the Nick and Layla series is, but that's okay. I've learned to be okay with it. So where I am right now is I have Zoe published. I have the first three um, parts of the Nick and Layla series. They are Walk Away, Sorry, and White Flag. And just yesterday I put up the fourth entrance or the fourth part of that series up called Damaged. And it went up in hours and I was shocked. And when I woke up this morning and checked um, my account on Amazon... I'd already sold one, which was fantastic because the whole process for this was like, you know, a very small concentrated version of what happened with Zoe. I wrote Zoe relatively fast. I started it in May and I finished it late August. I finished it about a year ago today. Um, so that's only April, May, June, July, August, five months to write a book and it's 83,000 words, between 83 and 84,000 words. So it's not a short read. And the fourth Nick and Layla book, Damaged, I wrote in about four days. <laughs> and that's about the time span of the story itself. And the reason I wrote it so fast was because I had this uncharacteristically um, enthusiastic rush and spilling of energy. And <clears throat> I had been sick for a week. I, I went to Florida for a week, came back. I was sick for a week. I was in bed reading, uh, reading some things that, you know, I won't share because I'm embarrassed by it. It was Fifty Shades of Grey. And, um, I got an email for, or an inbox notification from someone on Goodreads. And this person said, um, are you going to write a fourth Nick and Layla? Because I've been waiting eight months to find out what happens and I'd like to know. <laughs> and that kind of lit a fire under my butt. And a few days later, I, she wrote to me originally seven days ago and now the book is available. Um, that's super fast. And that's probably not going to be your experience because maybe you'll be more careful and, or maybe, you know, I'm lucky in that I can make my own book covers. Um, and I made mine in just a few hours. I found a stock image I liked. It happened to be on sale. I happened to have enough credits for it in my iStock account. And I happened to be good at Photoshop. Um, so, it, you know, it just happens in such a way where everything worked fast for me. I edited it. Is it a perfectly polished version? Probably not. But that doesn't really bother me so much. I can always fix that later. And it doesn't deter from the story. So yeah, that's been my experience so far. I have another series that I started called Soup, which is short for Supernatural. And it's a young adult series. And it, it's supposed to be kind of like each story is an episode. Like it like if you're watching an episode of a TV show, that's about the length it is. Um, but I, I'm, I'm not able to commit the time to writing that right now the way I want to because I'm, I'm you know, finishing with my um, thesis and whatnot. But I'm going to continue it. And it's I had it on Amazon. <coughs> excuse me. I had it on Amazon. I took it down 
So now I just have the five titles and, um, yeah. So if you are curious about the experience of self-publishing and you want to know information, there are so many resources you can check out. I personally would recommend the Absolute Write Forms or Absolute what? writer for or water cooler I'll leave a link in the description below it's a great message board community for writers um lots of you know there are some well-known names on there as well and people you can talk to who will share their experiences just the same as I'm doing now and maybe they've had much bigger success than I have um, I'm sure a lot of them have because I read their stories and not their stories that they've published but their stories about how they're publishing how they're being how successful they are and I'm like I want that to be my experience as well if you want to ask me any questions about my experience for me to give a personal explanation to I'd be happy to do that just leave it below in the description in the comment section and I'll answer it I like I said I kind of would have liked to see something like this when I was on the pathway to publishing and so I thought it would be fun to do this series and um yeah so I don't really know when I'll make another video maybe when I have the time to sit down or I have something to talk about I you can probably tell from this that I I don't really speak I'm a much better writer than I am a talker I don't think in a linear fashion. It drives my fian my fiance nuts because I go all over the place and I probably should have made notes before I sat down and, and made this video, but um, I wanted it to be more organic and um, expressive of my personality, I guess. So yeah, so that's kind of an overview of my experience so far just with Amazon. Like I've said, I've been on Smashwords, I've been on All Romance, I've been on Barnes & Noble. And for what it's worth, Amazon has been the best solution, hands down. There are a lot of points in the plus column for Amazon and a few negative ones as well. And I can talk about those as this series progresses along. Um, so if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be happy to address them um, and give you any advice that I can for what it may be worth to you. Um, the point is that if you are an author or a writer, however you prefer to call yourself, and you want to self-publish your work, you can do it. It's possible. I, literally, if I can do it, you can do it. And there are so many resources available to you. Use them and absorb everything you can about what the process is going to be like. Prepare yourself for the, you know, for the realization of what is actually going to happen to you. And if you've already started that process and you're published, congratulations. That's really freaking exciting. And as a fellow writer, thumbs up to you. So thank you for watching. And um, I hope you didn't mind my nifty background here. This is the place where I have probably the best light. So I just decided to sit down. My bed's not even made. It's like whatever. You're not here to look at my bed. You're here to listen to my story about self-publishing. And that's been it. So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye.